From Cremo Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Last month, President Sol Ramaphosa officially opened the 1 billion rand, 78 hectare Gibela Trade Manufacturing Facility in Dunnata Park in Johannesburg. The facility will manufacture, assemble, test, commission and deliver 580 new extrapolis megacommuter trains for Prasa. Nadine James tells us more. The facility's launch form part of PRASA's 20-year rail modernization program, which is aimed at revitalizing the rail industry through local manufacture of parts, the provision of training facilities, and the creation of jobs. PRASA spokesperson Nana Zanani explained how the facility will benefit the Nigel community. This is a billion rands uh, uh, manufacturing plant, but in terms of the feet, the people that walk in here, we have currently 700 uh, staff members working here. This is going to go up to 1,500 permanent uh, staff, looking at a 50-50 ratio between men and women. Most of them are from Ekuleni, in and around Ekuleni. Most of them are under 40 years old, which means that they actually have a long life in terms of the work uh, focus here at the plant. So there is a lot in terms of growth in the manufacturing um, side of it, um, especially in terms of the people that are going to be coming into and working at the, at the factory. But most importantly, the factory itself is situated in an in a industrial development zone, which means that it's part of what government had focused on to make sure that they bring in manufacturing, they bring in jobs close to people's areas and make sure that local people are the ones who are employed in, in, the, in, in the manufacturing process. The six car trains are 131 meters long and weigh 220 tons. They comprise of locally produced stainless steel. Sonani described some of the other features and explained the focus on local procurement. These are state-of-the-art trains um, that we'll be manufacturing. We have, uh, as government, through process, set a target of 600 trains that we want manufactured over the next uh, 20 years or so. And uh, what you're seeing here is a culmination of that. These trains that you'll be seeing are completely different from the current uh, yellow and grey trains. These trains um, have onboard CCTV uh, cameras, fire suppression, they have automatic closing doors, the windows themselves um, don't open because the internal side of the trains is actually climate controlled and regulated. So this is particularly interesting and important because the current trains themselves now um, are very much on a manual basis. You have to open the windows, you have to air them out. So with this one, we actually looked at some of the challenges that we had from an operational point of view, as well as passenger comfort, and we took that into, into consideration when we were designing these trains. This is a 100% South African project. Um, remember that the first uh, 20 trains, because we were still planning to build this factory, were manufactured in Napa in Brazil. But what's important to note is that even during that time, we had taken uh, South African components and shipped them over to Napa in Brazil in order to have our trains um, manufactured there. What's significant about these current trains now is that they're made by South African hands, using South African uh, components. And what's important is that the South Africans themselves have acquired new skills and new technologies through the, the design and the manufacturing of this particular train. The industrial complex houses a factory, a supplier park and a rail training school to enable the continued transfer of new rail-related skills to Gibela's employees and suppliers. One of the beneficiaries of the Gibela system is Gibela Test Engineering Manager Elizabeth Foley. I started at Gibela in 2015 as a test engineer. Um, I was trained in Brazil and in France over a total of nine months where we spent doing practical training on the train, how the train functions and so forth. So I work in the testing department and we perform functional tests on the train to ensure that it works according to the specification. So in uh, Brazil we did work on the trains that there is built there because our first 20 trains were manufactured in Brazil. So um, yeah, we did training in Brazil and then in France we um, worked with some different teams at the different Alstom sites um, where we learnt about the train systems, so more detail about the different functions on the train, the different systems, how to work with them, how to troubleshoot them and so forth. So um, with all that training we're, we're now running the testing facility where we test the trains that are manufactured here. Our facility has a training centre where we take in a lot of young people to, to equip them with skills. Um, welding for example and so forth so there's a large intake into the training center that can equip young people to further their careers in different fields that they study um, 
increasing the economy, the first thing I can point to is there being a higher availability of safe and reliable transport that people can use to commute from home to school to work. And obviously with more com commuting, the, con the economy will naturally be improving. Other news making headlines. Telcom delivers strong H1 retrenchment retirement costs cuts earnings. Voluntary severance package and voluntary early retirement package costs have dragged down the earnings of JSC-listed telecom during the first half of the year. We are also able to contain our operating expenses to below uh, inflation levels, thus really boosting our EBITDA growth at 2.9% with a margin of 25.5% relative to the previous year at 26.1%. And ladies and gentlemen, if I can indicate that these numbers that we're presenting do exclude the impact of our voluntary separation packages and voluntary um, early retirement packages of 282 million rand with a related tax impact of 80 million rand. Our headline earnings um, per share, if we exclude the uh, VSP, the impact of VSP also increased by, by 10%. We spent less on our cap capex at 3.3 billion rand. We also saw a good improvement in our free cash flow, primarily due to increased cash generated from operations, but also a decline in our CAPEX. That's Kruma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.